The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again in, with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light and gloom, with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, <clears throat> Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps, and the bridegroom was delayed. All of them became drowsy and slept, but at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord and my Redeemer. Delays, waiting is difficult and frustrating especially for us today as we are living in an increasingly fast-paced world. Ever faster communication, travel, food, money, weight loss. Are we there yet? Now there's even an entire movement called the Slow Living Movement that has sprung up counter to counter this global preoccupation with speed and instant gratification. The apostles are concerned with the timing of events in their time, too. Just before this gospel reading today, Jesus tells the disciples that the temple is going to be destroyed. And the disciples ask him, tell us, when will this be and what will be the sign of your coming at the end of age? Jesus spends most of the previous chapter warning the disciples about misinterpreting would-be messiahs and of interpreting historical events as biblical signs, but then tells them, Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. And then Jesus tells them a series of parables, including this one we heard today that teaches them how to wait. 
I would like to suggest the idea that the parable of the ten bridesmaids speaks profoundly to us, the fast-paced 21st century people unprepared for delays and waiting. In the parable before this one, the master came sooner than expected and finds the servant abusing their power. In this parable today, the bridegroom comes later than anticipated, and not all the bridesmaids were prepared to wait. In the parable after this one, the master gives his servants talents before he goes away, and when he returns, confronts them about how they invested those talents. Initially, all the bridesmaids appear the same. They each dress for the wedding and come to it. They carry lamps filled with oil. They all cry, Lord, Lord. All of them sleep for a time while waiting for the coming of the bridegroom. When their faith in the bridegroom's arrival is tested, for his delayed, tested by his delayed arrival, the wise have the resources to sustain them. The only difference between the wise and foolish bridesmaids is that the wise are prepared for the wait and bring extra oil. The foolish assume that they already have enough in their lanterns when the wait, and when the wait is longer than expected, they are elsewhere looking for more supplies. And then the bridegroom arrives and the doors are closed. In these parables, Jesus seems less concerned with the coming than with the faithfulness with which people lived and prepared while waiting for the coming. And this is a subject that Matthew spends a lot of time focusing on in his, his whole gospel. In that first sermon on the Mount that we heard last week, told back in chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus instructs his followers, let your light shine before others so that they may see the good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And at the end of that first sermon, Jesus warns that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who do the will of my Father. Oil is not needed in heaven. There is immense and overflowing light, but it is needed here. Jewish tradition uses oil as a symbol of virtuous deeds, and in other Jewish traditions, it represents Torah. Matthew pictures preparation for the perusia, for the coming, as consistent, responsible deeds of discipleship, not the constant watching for the end of ages. Readiness for Matthew is living the qualities of life described in that first Sermon on the Mount, described in the Beatitudes, and they will require consistency. Being a peacemaker for a day is not as demanding as being a peacemaker year after year. Being merciful for an evening can be pleasant. Being merciful for a lifetime requires more resolve and preparedness. Refusing to harden your heart, even in seemingly ever-lengthening times of violence and hatred, is a radical act that mirrors the life of Jesus, who we call Lord, Lord. What distinguishes the foolish for the wise is the wise faithful's, wise faithful's continued preparation and readiness in the face of times of seeming endless waiting for the Lord's coming. In the midst of life's pain, adversity, intrigue, griefs, and fears, and the seeming endless waiting for the promised arrival of the kingdom of God, the already but not yet, the faithful keep their light shining before others by continuing in community, study, and prayer, doing deeds of mercy, offering forgiveness, and spreading justice and peace. This community of St. Thomas knows this from what I have observed in my time here. My prayer is that we may not relinquish or stop preparing for the hope that the world in each one of us will one day be transformed and fully recon reconciled with God. May it be so.
The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 390, or 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week, Wayne, Bunny, Chris, Jacob, Jane, Lana, Lily, Lizzie, Martha, Mary, Marvin, Nancy, Penny, Ryan, Rod, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of the Ukraine and the Holy Land at this time. And we pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world, and on all others who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here and abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, and Tony for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your own petitions and thanksgivings offered at this time. Let us remember and pray for our pastoral care team and Stephen ministry. Risen Lord, you have commanded us to love one another and commissioned us to make disciples. Help us as we live into the fullness of your call to new life. Give us wisdom and clarity as we prayerfully consider your call to serve and seek the most effective ways to bring your healing love to those in need. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen.